Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel Pathology Learning. I am Dr. Monica. So in today's class, we will be reading about free radical injury and which results actually in the most important cell, uh, form of cell death which is ferroptosis. So what are free radicals? Before that, I will like to tell one thing. So the most common cause of aging, cellular aging is free radical injury. This is the accepted hypothesis over now. So it has been asked many a times. The most common cause of uh, cellular aging is actually free radical injury. So what are these free radicals? Free radicals are nothing but these are molecules which have an unpaired electron in the outer orbit. Since, since this, there is this unpaired electron, it is very highly reactive. It keeps on reacting with whatever substance it means, be it a carbohydrate, protein, lipid, anything or a nucleic acid also. So whenever it reacts with these kind of uh, things, it will result in the damage. So uh, also it is autocatalytic. That is whenever a free radical meets with some other particle, it will try to convert that also into another free radical. So this will go on as a chain of reactions and that will result in a uh, accumulated free radicals, right? So with this uh, free radicals is going to cause damage. ROS, what is ROS? ROS is reactive oxygen species, which we are actually synonymously using it with free radical, but it is actually one of the types of free radicals only. So these free radicals are normally produced in the body. It's not that it is present uh, produced only during some pathological condition. It is normally produced during uh, normal uh, physiology itself. But then it's being uh, removed by certain antioxidants as well. So there is normally a balance between the production of free radicals and this uh, antioxidants. Whenever this balance is lost, that is when there is increased free radical production or the decrease in the antioxidant mechanism which is counteracting this. So that will lead to an imbalance and that imbalance will lead to cell death okay, and damage. So when are all these free radicals produced? During normal mitochondrial respiration like oxidative phosphorylation. So whenever there is uh, incomplete uh, oxidation, it will result in the formation of these free radicals which is ROS, reactive oxygen species. Same thing for any other redox reactions as well. Uh, again, free radical or ROS can be produced. In inflammation, neutrophils or macrophages, we all know the final step of it is production of this NADPH oxidase which is uh, important in the killing of the organism, right? So this NADPH oxidase is again an oxidase enzyme which will result in the formation of this free radicals. Then what is Fenton's reaction? Fenton's reaction is the one in which we have increased amount of iron. Iron is, the, uh, it is bad when iron is accumulating, it will lead to free radical injury. So we will see it how. So Fenton reaction is where the increased iron will result in the production of free radicals. Same goes for other transport metals like co copper as well. So iron and copper has been implicated in the formation of free radicals when they are large in number. Then ionizing radiation and drugs, certain drugs which uh, uh, gets metabolized into a free radical. So let's see how these free radicals are formed. So whenever we have this radiation, toxins or whatever injuries, injurious stimuli is being given, uh, there is production of this free radical. The first free radical to be formed is a superoxide. So superoxide is formed. This superoxide will then get converted into uh, hydrogen peroxide which is H2O2 by the enzyme superoxide dismutase. It, uh, this uh, superoxide uh, ion, it will get dismutated into hydrogen peroxide. Then this hydrogen peroxide gets converted into hydroxyl ion. This is the, this is the OH dot. This OH is hydroxyl ion is the most potent. Okay, hydroxyl ion is the most potent free radical. It is capable of producing the ma maximum damage. Okay, so this reaction in which ion in its ferrous form catalyzes is this called as the Fenton's reaction. So Fenton reaction is nothing but Hydrogen peroxide in the presence of ferrous ion, it will form hydroxyl ion which is the free radical again. Uh, in this process, ferrous is getting converted into its ferric form and this hydroxyl ion is the most potent free radical. So this is the most important reaction, Fenton's reaction and this is the one which has been implicated in ferroptosis. Okay, so remember that. So other than that, there is also other mechanisms in which these free radicals can be produced. For example, super, uh, no, sorry, hydroxyl ion can be produced by the hydrolysis of water as well. So whenever radiation is present, radiation can hydrolyze water into hydroxyl ion. Then again, superoxide when it reacts with 
uh, nitric oxide it will no is nitric oxide nitric oxide it will result in the formation of peroxy nitrile which is again a free radical then ccl4 this is a drug when it gets metabolized it can produce the free radical ccl3 okay so in here we can see it is superoxide then h2o2 which is hydrogen peroxide then hydroxyl ion then this peroxy nitrile and the ccl3 these are all these are free radicals okay most important of which was this hydroxyl uh, ion which was the most potent free radical so let's see we were seeing this free radical is causing damage so how does it cause damage what is the uh, damage which is being caused by this free radical let's see so free radicals can either damage the membrane the proteins or the nucleus so in membrane it results in something called as lipid peroxidation it is very very important lipid peroxidation so pufa is polyunsaturated fatty acid these pufa are present in the cell membrane so whenever the cell membrane pufa is being attacked by this hydroxyl ion which is the free radical here so that will result in the formation of lipid peroxides these lipid peroxides pufa is lipid right? so it will lead to formation of lipid peroxides these lipid peroxides in turn will damage the membrane okay so coming to proteins in proteins it will ox these free radicals will oxidize these proteins so oxidized proteins uh, can in turn result in damage so for example enzymes are also proteins their active site gets damaged so uh, enzymes become inactive they cannot function normally same goes for the protein structure so whenever it getting oxidized the secondary and tertiary structure of the protein is damaged so that will again result in either a misfolded protein or when there is a misfolded protein it will it has to undergo degradation so the, the proteins will be degraded or misfolded leading to protein loss or if there is an accumulation of this misfolded protein going on it will in turn lead to a stress on to the endoplasmic reticulum which is called as the endoplasmic reticulum stress then coming on to nucleus these free radicals can induce single stranded and double stranded dna breaks so dna is getting break uh, broken and then uh, it can lead to the formation of adducts this adducts when they accumulate can in turn lead to the mutations so whenever mutations happen it will have some uh, bad effects right so free radicals had damaged membrane the dna is out now and again proteins were also getting damaged so whenever this uh, this is getting accumulated this kind of damage is getting accumulated the cell will eventually die it cannot cope up with this kind of a, a heavy in cell so it, the cell will die either by a necrosis or an apoptosis or a ferroptosis okay so initially it was thought that free radical injury always leads to uh, necrosis only since membrane is damaged it was uh, conventionally thought as free radical injury leads to necrosis only but now they had identified that free radical injury can in turn lead to uh, necrosis apoptosis and also the new form of cell death which has been identified which is the ferroptosis so uh, we had seen how free radicals were produced normally if it is getting produced so how is there no uh, how is there no damage in the normal cell it's because there were some counteractive mechanisms which are called as antioxidants which had resulted in the removal of these free radicals so what are the uh, free radical removal mechanisms these normally are very unstable and they themselves decay spontaneously that is one thing but when are they when they are getting accumulated what happens there are this antioxidant mechanisms the first one is vitamins the vitamins which are vitamin a c and e these vitamins a c and e are known for uh, known as antioxidants which can remove these free radicals then in enzymes we have uh, certain enzymes we'll see so superoxide ion like i told it uh, it gets dismutated into hydrogen peroxide with the help of the enzyme superoxide dismutase so sod is superoxide dismutase so this is the first enzyme which is the antioxidant then uh, hydrogen peroxide again will get converted into uh, hydroxyl ion in fenton's reaction right so hydrogen peroxide can also undergo hydrolysis into water and oxygen with the help of this catalase enzyme then hydrogen peroxide and both the hydrogen peroxide and hydroxyl ions both hydrogen peroxide and hydroxyl ions they can get broken down by the most important enzyme which is the gl uh, glutathione peroxidase 4 gpx4 is glutathione peroxidase 4 so gpx4 will catalyze uh, it will break down this hydrogen peroxide and oh uh, hydroxyl ion into water so all these three enzymes is superoxide dismutase catalase and glutathione peroxidase these three are the most important enzymatic uh, antioxidants 
so all these enzymes are present actually in the peroxisome these are peroxisomal enzymes remember uh, the free radicals can be produced in any organ it but h2o2 it can be produced both in the peroxisome and in other organs uh, other organelles as well so hydrogen peroxide alone is produced and as well as degraded in the peroxisome remember this h2o2 is both produced and degraded in peroxisome so one other important thing i want to mention over here is this superoxide dismutase superoxide dismutase it exists in two forms a cytoplasmic form which contains these copper zinc in its in, in its active site okay copper zinc is the cytoplasmic form of the uh, superoxide dismutase while manganese this is the mitochondrial form of this superoxide dismutase so there is a disease called as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis amyotrophic lateral sclerosis it is actually a motor neuron disease affecting both the upper motor neurons and the lower motor neuron it actually results from this sod gene this is the superoxide dismutase one defect sod one defect so remember this superoxide dismutase was the most important antioxidant in the brain so all of this has been asked in mcqs this um, uh, sod1 which is the cytoplasmic form resulting in amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and uh, and uh, uh, superoxide dismutase is the main antioxidant in the brain which is the copper zinc form especially okay so all this have been asked as mcqs so moving on to the next type of uh, um, uh, antioxidants which is the transport protein i will make a mention in fenton's reaction uh, iron was involved so other metal like copper can also lead to the formation of these free radicals so whenever there is an increase in iron or a copper that will actually lead to free radical formation so normally what happens is this iron and copper they are bound with their transport proteins so they are not available in their free form so free radical formation is being avoided over here so iron is transported with the help of it is associated with transferrin ferritin and lactoferrin while ceruloplasmin it will bind to copper and transport it so whenever there is a decrease in these transport proteins it will result in the increase in the trace metals like iron and copper that will result in the free radical injury so that's it for today's video so in today's class we had seen what are free radicals how they are normally formed in the body and then next uh, the effects caused by these free radicals that is the damage produced by them then how these uh, free radicals are being removed from the body by antioxidants so in the next video we will be seeing about uh, how these free radicals are implicated in the form of cell death called as ferroptosis so if you like my video consider subscribing and uh, share it to your friends who might also benefit from this video thank you